instead we'll go into some case scenarios i think you can all use the chat box to give your answers if you wish to a 40 year old male with fbs of 100 and ppbs 280 when the ppbs is monitored uh, periodically it is in the range of 200 to 300 it peaks mostly after breakfast the hbnc of this patient is 8 what option would you think which insulin would you choose we are not discussing any tablets here tablets are a good option many options are there in this scenario but suppose you have only insulin as an option what would you choose You can use any of the short acting insulins or regular acting insulins or the rapid acting insulin to be given once a day before breakfast. Maybe you can start it six units or eight units, a smallish kind of a dose, monitor the sugars and increase the dose accordingly. The next case scenario, 78 year old lady, fasting is 250, after food is 280. HbA1c is 8.5, already on tablets. What are the insulin options you can think of? You can think of a long acting insulin to be given once at night uh, so that the fasting sugars are better controlled. Once the fasting reaches about 120 or 100, automatically the PBS is expected to come down. So just one insulin prick might solve the problem with this patient. So uh, insulin glargin would be the best choice in my opinion, glargin or detimir. Then uh, if the patient is FO not affording, then you can give insulin NPH, maybe eight or 10 units at night, only at night. See here, the aim is to control the fasting blood sugar. I'm getting, I'm seeing some of your answers like basal bolus and mixture insulin, but uh, think a bit more uh, you know, simpler. Mixed insulin will help reduce the PPBS. Yes, definitely that's a good option. But here, why not give controlling the fasting blood sugar alone a shot? You know, just one insulin, it can, it can control the blood sugar, the fasting blood sugar to about 100 or 120. The PPBS will come down to say 150 levels mostly. If it is just a relative difference between fasting and PPBS of 30 points, then PPBS will auto automatically come down. Still, if the PPBS is not getting controlled after getting FPS under control, then you can probably shift to mixed chart insulin. That would be a good choice. Yes. In the next scenario, a 55-year-old lady with a FBS of 300 and PPBS of 500. DM detected today. Our HBNC is 30. What are your insulin options? Here, the fasting is very high, true, but the PPBS is quite much higher than fasting blood sugar. Even if you do control the fasting blood sugar to 100, the PPBS is still expected to remain higher, much higher compared to the fasting. So in this case, mixed chart insulin would be a good choice. Yeah, that's a good answer. The regular insulin along with mixed chart, mm, yes, if you, if you use it a bit intelligently, that's also a good option. You can give insulin mixed chart 30, 70, uh, to this uh, this kind of a patient um, twice a day and maybe a regular insulin before lunch to cover the post-lunch blood sugar spike. That's a, that's a reasonable option. Uh, perhaps the best option would be to give basal bolus regimen for this patient. Like give a 24-hour acting insulin or a long even longer acting insulin once a day to stabilize the basal blood sugar and to account for the Postprandial rice, you can give either uh, the rapid acting insulins like Aspart or Lispro, or you can give regular insulin, depending on the affordability of the patient or the motivation of the patient. So yes, this patient will need a combination of insulins, most probably. You are right. Next case scenario, a 55-year-old lady who travels widely. She has got very erratic food timings and she's got poor compliance to in, even twice daily insulin. Her fasting is 180, PPBS is 330, HBNC is 
could could anyone give a single best answer for this glargin is a reasonable option yes glargin is a reasonable option you can bring the fasting blood sugar down but it wouldn't take care of the ppbs surge isn't it this 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 lady is traveling widely and is very erratic with the food timings and has got poor compliance yes but the better answer would be yeah as someone has answered dr amulya uh, it it the the better answer would be um, injection i drug as insulin degludec plus aspart combined combined because the degludec portion of that for the the formulation will give a very very extended basal insulin coverage for about 35 to 40 hours very safely which will keep her uh, fasting blood sugar on the lower side and to cover for the post prandial surge uh that fast act the the insulin aspart component will help so she can take insulin degludec aspart any any time of the day once a day before her most major meal so it is compatible with her erratic food timings and travel uh, kind of a lifestyle so that would be perhaps the best possible insulin for this this particular patient since we are talking about insulin here we start to the answer of insulin but as uh, someone has answered a glp1 agonist that's also a good option here that it's not an insulin uh, if the patient is not on a gliptin uh, and is obese overweight perhaps a glp1 agonist is a good choice also that's a good option yeah the next case scenario 60 year old male fasting of 130 ppbs of 230 post lunch it is 280 and post dinner it is 270 the person is already on pre mixed insulin 30 by 70 18 units in the morning and 12 units in the night how would you adjust this so fasting is reasonably well uh, well controlled after breakfast is slightly on the higher side but after lunch and after dinner it's quite high it's it's not being controlled anyhow so what is happening is around lunch time uh, the the regular insulin component In the from the morning dose, it's not working anymore. So the postprandial surge is not being controlled. By dinner time, <clears throat> again those twelve units of insulin will contain only about four to five units of the regular insulin. That's also not sufficient to control that post dinner hike, the spike. So one option would be to change this insulin from thirty seventy to fifty fifty, and give it three times a day. So that will better control the postprandial surges because the regular insulin will be. higher in the dose that that would be a, a decent option to try another option as someone has answered again would be a basal bolus regimen yes you can give a basal insulin once a day and three times you can give regular insulin or one of the rapid acting insulins but again it involves one additional trick and additional cost perhaps this patient will be managed at, with at a much lower cost with a 50 50 insulin given three times a day I, I get very surprised that I don't see many prescriptions in practice in real life about uh, insulin fifty fifty three times a day. But you know many patients are very happy with that. 